If you'd like to follow the process of turning a block of wood like this into a guitar like this, then you've come to the right place. And if you would like to see me give this guitar away, click subscribe, hit the bell. Don't let it intimidate you. Just have at it, work at it, and it'll, it'll come along. So finding myself crying and seeing some of these guitars. Uh, this is Stevie Ray Vaughan's primary guitar. I can't believe I'm actually seeing it in person. Welcome to Let's Build a Guitar. If this is your first time watching, what I do on this channel is I build custom guitars and I'm giving some of them away. And there is information in the notes below that you can look at if you'd like to see how you can nominate somebody to be considered as a recipient for one of these guitars. This is not a raffle, this is not a drawing, but rather it's an attempt to bring some joy into somebody's life who could really benefit from getting a gift like this uh, just given to them. So that's kind of what I'm setting out to do here. and. I, uh, I'm going to be building a couple of, working on a couple of guitars today here. We're continuing the builds if you haven't watched any of the videos before. And so one of the things that we're going to do is I'm going to continue shaping these Union Jack guitars. We're going to round these off a little bit more, get them more in shape how I want the body to be. And then also on these Horizon guitars, which are going to be a thin line, semi-hollow, uh, basically, if you would consider a thin line Telecaster meets a Prince style, Cloud style guitar, that's kind of what these are. So I'm going to put in my sound holes today. We're going to cut those in and do a little sanding, and then we're going to glue these together. The first time that I built one of these guitars, I waited until I had it all put together before I sanded this and it made it a lot more difficult. And if you wanna save yourself a lot of time, think about and figure out what, uh, what order of events need to take place. And so by sanding, by cutting this out and sanding it before I put the two body halves together, I can put one hand down and one hand out. And I can sand so much quicker than I did before. Now I know you don't want to just watch me do a bunch of sanding and so uh, I, I turn off the camera when I'm doing a lot of sanding um, but you need to know that really I think the most time consuming the thing that I do the most when I'm building guitars is sanding. I'm using a 150 grit on this right now. Um, I will actually sand the insides of these down to at least a 400, probably a 600 grit uh, before I actually glue these together because I can do all of that sanding now and it's easier. So I'll do that to about a, a 600 grit probably is what I'll be doing. Uh, but I got some shape in here yet. This isn't completely rounded yet. I got some bumps in there that I need to take care of. So now that I've got these fronts, with the sound hole cut out, shaped, sanded, and the backs are, or the, excuse me, the interiors are all ready to go here. I'm gonna do just a little bit of touch up paint on, on these sides in here and here. And uh, then we're gonna go ahead and glue these together. The one thing that I just wanna say about when we glue these together and when you start doing anything like this, um, it takes way more clamps than what most novices would think. Um, 
you want to make sure that it is clamped tight all the way around that the seams are so solid that you can almost not even see the seam is there. You want it that tight all the way around. So we load these up with clamps and uh, it's more clamps than you ever really think that you would need to use. Uh, in other words, you're not going to just put one clamp here, a clamp here, a clamp here, maybe a clamp there. It's going to be loaded up with clamps all the way around. Well, I'm not always certain how much of this you want to see, but I'm going to go ahead and start gluing these together. I personally have been using the Elmer's Wood Glue Max. Another really great glue is Tight Bond. In fact, Tight Bond is probably used by more guys. Uh, in fact, if I were to go to Tight Bond, I'd probably go to Tight Bond 3 from what I've been reading about how much it shrinks or doesn't shrink. And so anyway, Tight Bond, I like to use this. It is waterproof, it is stainable, and that's one of the reasons why I got it because there's actually wood chips or pieces of wood in the glue, and so it is stainable. Um, not that I should ever have glue seeping out where it needs to uh, be stained, but if there's something on a seam or something, it does take stain. So that's why I go with this. And I guess I've just, I've used it for probably going on 12 years now, and it's always worked really good for me. So, you know, once something works, why change, right? Um, so maybe you want to leave a comment below on why you would not use this. And maybe you want to use tight bond instead if, uh, if you're one of those guys. We're going to go upstairs now, go to the garage, and we're going to just work a little bit on shaping this uh, body. Um, I'm going to round these corners off so they're not quite so sharp. We're going to curve this off a little bit. I'm going to round, be rounding this off some more so that this is really, just really round and smooth. I want it to be sleek, sleek and round in here too, rounding off. And uh, this isn't going to be near this sharp here. I want to round this more off and really do this. I, I use that bit to just really kind of get a, the majority of the material out of there so I don't have to sand quite so much. But then I'm going to bring this down and then kind of flow it through there. So we're going to go shape this for a bit. It is like 64 degrees warmer today right now than what it was a couple days ago. It is still cold out. But it was 26 degrees below zero Fahrenheit just two days ago. And that would be, I think that's like 32 degrees below zero Celsius. I'm going to head over to Sioux Falls, South Dakota now for one of your guitar build stories as I go and see if I can have Josh from J Reek Guitars let me film his shop and have him show me around just a little bit and tell a little bit about how he builds guitars. He does some fantastic acoustics. So I'm here with Josh at J Reek, right? J Rick. J Rick. Rick, yeah. Okay, I'll start that over. <laughs> so I'm here with Josh at J Rick Guitars in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And 
Josh is an incredible luthier. You went to school for? Yep, that's correct. Are you right? Where did you go? Uh, Red Wing in uh, Red Wing, Minnesota. It's Minnesota State College Southeast Technical is technically the school. So my big question is, what was it that lit the fire of passion under you to build guitars? Um, it was kind of, I had a college professor who um, kind of pointed me in that direction. And up to that point, I had never, it had never crossed my mind. Yeah. I played guitar since I was probably five years old. There was one in the house when I was growing up. You know, some of my earliest memories are pulling up this big old classical on my lap. So it's always been a part of my life. Uh, never considered doing it as a, as a job um, until I was in college and kind of bounced around, kind of wondering what to do. And one of my instructors at Northern State University in Aberdeen had a poster for this uh, program in Red Wing outside his door. And he's like, have you ever considered this? And um, Had you done woodwork before? No, no. But I, I, so I always okay. had an interest in music and I always had an interest in visual arts. I did a lot of sculpture okay. and painting and stuff like that. Sure. I always took all the art electives I could yep. in school. Um, so, you know, it, it kind of clicked immediately like, oh, this would be a great way to combine these two interests. And I, say, I can see that in your guitars is that the artistry starts to come out. Yeah. Like the electric that you're going to show us in just a little bit, you can just see the design. The, well, thank you. Yes. Yeah. yeah and that, that's, I really like making one off kind of stuff too, you know, mm -hmm. just because of that, like that creative element of design. Yeah. Well, you've got a legitimate I, shop here. I mean, we're going to take a quick look around the shop. Sure. And, but uh, yeah. It, and not only do you build acoustic guitars and electric guitars, but you do violins, is that right? I don't build violins. You don't build I, violins? No, I, I repair violin family okay, instruments. Repair violins. Um, I build um, some things that look similar to violins occasionally. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and, and then you just started doing ukuleles. I started the ukes probably in 2010 or 11, I suppose. Oh, okay. So. Yeah, right around there anyway. Cool. Now we're not talking about just any uke. This is, you know, you go to a guitar center and you're going to see a uke for 50 bucks, right? Yeah. You start right around $3,000, right? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a piece of art too, so. Thank you. Yeah, wonderful. Want to tell us a little bit about uh, this electric guitar out here? We can go. Amber, this is uh, just the second one of these I've made. Got a couple more coming up here, but um, this is a, a quilted maple top with Swamp Ash back. It's a beautiful back too, isn't it? Yeah, yeah thanks. I love that. Yeah, I did the back and sides in a satin and the neck and then a, with a gloss top. Um, ebony fingerboard, ebony tailpiece. Uh, this has a, actually a brass underlay in here so it can oh. be grounded and also give it some structural integrity. Nice. Um, one of the first electric instruments I ever built had a, a ebony tailpiece on it and it was, we were displaying it up at a shop I worked at in Aberdeen w w after school and uh, the tailpiece exploded. Oh no. <laughs> like while it was sitting in the store. So I've been traumatized by that. So, so. challenges you faced. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. So we're going to make sure that it's got some durability to yeah. it. What do you use for pickups in there then? This has uh, antiquity, Seymour Duncan antiquities. Um, so all the hardware on here is relic. Um, this was my, my customer's choice. You know, uh -huh. he, He's an antique dealer, actually, and really it, like likes this juxtaposition of old and new. So uh -huh. uh, we did all uh, relic hardware on it to give it a little bit of a patina. Yeah, that quilting um, is just amazing on there. Yeah, thanks. Wow. So this is a, a curly maple binding, you know, black purfling, just kind of black and white. You know, it's all ebony and, and maple yep. for the most part in ash. Tell us about your uh, logo up here, your... So the logo, my last name in German uh, translates to spear or lance. So this is a riff on a, a spear head. Cool. We'll just kind of double it up to give it some visual interest. And, Very nice. Yeah. Love it. Okay, so we got a few other bodies here. Yeah, this is a, a new design. I haven't posted anything about this yet, but uh, this is going to be kind of my take on a, on a telly or just a solid body flat top electric. Um, these first ones I did out of uh, pine as kind of a throwback to the old no caster, you know. Yep. Um, so this is a you know curly maple top in the works, so this will all get cleaned up and look beautiful when it's done. And then, I, as a, to show it can be configured in a couple different ways, I did this with the body contours mm -hmm. on it and stuff. Um, and this body isn't chambered, or this one is. Um, <laughs> This could be set up with any pickup configuration you wanted. It's just going to be kind of my standard flat top mm -hmm. um, electric. 
so nice and then underneath the next drawer down yeah. so you don't do violins but you've got i mean this is <laughs> this is this is incredible a violin shaped object of, it is of some sort check this out so this is an ele electric upright base so it's an original design this is the oh my goodness third one of these i guess um we'll have a bolt-on neck um but uh I, I need to finish up a tailpiece and then make an extension here so that it sits on your on your hip like if you're playing a full size upright. But this is um, oh my goodness, look at that! Locally harvested curly walnut. Um, we don't get a lot of opportunities to use local woods in the Upper Midwest necessarily, really? but I was really lucky to get a bunch of this curly black walnut that was cut in Sioux Falls actually. So okay. got some local wood Very there. Very nice. It's curled there. Yeah. And you got your logo right there again. Yep. Very yep. nice. And, like a, that. and a custom inlay on the back. Yeah, this is Very coming right nice. along. That's going to be amazing. I can't wait to see that when it's done. Beautiful. So let's talk ukes here for a moment. Yeah, here's one ukulele that's in the works. Uh, this one I actually started quite a while ago, but I've been waiting to finish up a batch so I can do all the necks at the same time. Yep. But uh, so this binding isn't scraped out or anything like that. But this is uh, myrtle, curly myrtle wood with koa binding. Um, I almost always do softwood tops on my ukuleles unless someone specifically wanted, um, you know, an all koa or something like that. Just more resonant, sounds mm -hmm. better to my ear. Yeah, you're sending them all over the world. Yep, they've, they've uh, in Japan and China and um, all over the United States and some going to Europe now, so. I think we can all learn a few things from Josh here. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> Persistence is key. <laughs> <laughs> right? One of the things that I've been saying that I want to do is to have you share some of your guitar building stories and just in like 500 words, three to 600 words maybe, send me your guitar building story, your passions, how you decided to start building guitars and some pictures of guitar you built, maybe tell a little bit about some of the challenges you faced and some of the mistakes you made, how you fix those. And there's a link, my email is below in the notes so you can find it there, send it to that email and then I can share your story. Thank you.